I'm Matthias Neu out of the Grono office and I'd like to show you real quick how to set up an asset with the AMS Asset Monitor. So for that, after seeing the dashboard already and we see that we don't have an asset configured, we're just moving into the asset section. And from here you see that we have a new asset button. So with pressing the new asset button, you see already a table of the predefined assets that we have available from template perspective. So we can choose whatever fits best to our application or to the machine you like to look into through so the asset itself. And for example, I'm just choosing the motor asset right now. So I'm clicking onto the motor asset and press the create asset button here. And we see that we automatically move into the configuration pages for the asset itself. So it starts with a general description. And as I've been choosing the motor asset, I just call it motor for me. And uh, we also have descriptional fields that could be optional information on the motor itself, an asset ID and number of the asset. So I just call it number one. Um, if we have, if we are aware of the manufacturer or a model type or serial number, this could be entered into the vendor information section, but we don't need to enter it automatically as it is optional information. But we definitely should have a look after the detailed section, which means running speed of the machine is a nominal speed of the machine. So I'm um, just entering 3000 RPM and it could be a motor with two poles and the line frequency resulting from that would be 50 hertz. So that's quite everything from the general page and the second step here is as it is a motor with bearings we need to specify the type of bearings as well so we're moving into the bearing section by pressing the bearings button or the bearings tab and here again we're ha having opportunities to set up the type of uh, bearings that were that the motor is using so the manufacturer is unknown to me so I enter that, but I know that the bearings I'm simulating with my sound card here is uh, a type number 16001, and the type for sure is an anti-friction bearing. So with having chosen the anti-friction bearing and knowing that it is an anti-friction bearing, I have two opportunities to com configure the bearing itself. It could be either by knowing the bearing frequencies, if we're looking into the bearing data sheet, this could be information found from there. Otherwise, by the mechanical parameters of the bearing, which means specification by the number of rolls or bolts, um, border or diameter, the pitch diameter, the contact angle could be entered from mechanical perspective with specification of the bearing as well. But for me, I'm just entering the bearing frequencies as I know that 0 0.38 for this type of bearing, um, 2.04. It's 3.07 and 4.93. So for sure, you see from the picture over here, we're now specify, uh, specifying the bearing um, that's shown from at the motor outlet side, so the left side of looking to the motor. And for sure, we have an outboard bearing, that's the inboard bearing. We have an outboard bearing as well that's indicated by the blue bar here in the picture now. And we need to do the same thing for the second type of bearing inside of the motor as well. So I expect it being the same types of bearings at 16001, 001, and it's an anti-friction bearing as well. And now, for sure, again, we need to enter the frequencies, the bearing frequencies. For reference, it's 0 0.38 once again, 2.04, 3.07, and 4.93. Now, after having done the specification of the bearings and the fault frequencies, we now need to understand which type of charm is bringing signals into the asset itself for understanding where the locations are. And that can be easily done by the source mapping. So the source definitely is our charms. And for my demo over here, I have two piezo charms and a temperature sensor, a sensor connected. So I decide now the mapping between the charm and the measurement location where the sensor is looking to the motor itself. So that means for the inboard horizontal vibration that's marked with number one, I can easily click on the uh, opportunities and it shows me the two piezo charms that I have available from dynamic signal perspective. And with choosing one of the piezo sensors, you see that now the number is mapped with a blue background 
um, that indicates that this channel has been mapped and is available for the asset. And for sure, number four is our outboard. So I'm using the second channel for the outboard and you see the mapping as well. And last but not least, we may have a speed sensor, but I don't have one with the demo, but we can easily map a temperature sensor, which shows me that channel three is an RTD sensor connected that I'm mapping to the location number eight. Now, after having done the assignment between the inputs and the measurement positions inside of our asset at the motor, uh, I'm able to specify alarm limits, and the alarm limits refer to the bearings now. So that can be um, a peak view, as I have decided to measure peak view with my charms. I can enable limits from here, and I have three opportunities into both directions, upper and lower direction, so it could be positive and negative understanding. So I'm, um, I'm just entering a value or two over here, so it does not automatically mean that all the values need to be given or all fields need to drive an alarm, so I can also go with high for, let's say, 2Gs and high high for 6Gs if I want to. And I can do the same thing for the output horizontal vibration as well if I want to, and I go with the same values here, 2 and, and 6. And for sure, as I have mapped the temperature sensor, I can also say that there should be a high, high, high if it reaches, for example, 150 degrees Celsius. So whenever we do that, you see the green checkboxes. That is also um, checking if the value is, is um, possible. So what you can see, for example, if I go to high, 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 which should be the highest value, but entering five over here, it will not allow me to do so as the high, high, high value seems to be lower than the high, high. So it needs to be correct in order, and this is checked by the asset monitor as well. So finally, those information or those alarms that are entered into these fields can also be driven out of a digital output charm, finally, uh, based on the values um, entered for the asset, but also for the charm level. So this is what the decision in, in configuration for a digital output charm means if we decide between the charm mapping or the asset mapping for driving the output to become activated. But last but not least, after having the alerts configured, and it does not automatically mean we need to do so, but we can if we want to, we are moving into the analytics section, and this allows us to look after all the rules, all the asset rules, health indication rules that are available for this type of asset. And this may vary a little bit depending on the type of asset you have been choosing. But for the motor asset, you see that we have air gap, alignment, balancing, bearing, ground loop, looseness and lubrication rules to become activated in case of needs and in case we want to. And this is just to be done by checking or unchecking the boxes. So if we want to have air gap included for our in investigations and um, health understanding, then we are just checking the boxes. I leave all of them checked for not having any limitations. On the upper part about the alert limits, and this goes back to the measurement alerts for sure as well, but now looking to those alerts used within the asset and the health understanding, where you see that we have a field about sensitivity, and this is a specification that goes back to ISO standard. It's the ISO 10816, so 10816, and within this standard, and I'm moving over this real quick just for reference, um, it specifies different types of machines. It's group one or group two, and it could be with a rigid basement or a flexible basement for both types. So depending on the type of machine as specified within the ISO 10 o, uh, 10816, you're able to specify the limits automatically from that. That's exactly what the asset manager is using according to the ISO 10816. So from here you see that we can specify the four different types of machines, small machines, medium machines, large rigid, uh, soft rigid, and we have a custom opportunity as well. And just for, for uh, in case you're interested in seeing that for this type of machines, let's say we're dealing with a medium machine, you can show up the limits as they are resulting from the standard as well for all the different rules that are activated. So these are exactly the rules that the um, asset monitor is looking after 
inside of, of the activation of an air gap understanding, alignment balancing. So this is going back to the standard finally and resulting from the standard. So last but not least, after we have set up all the parameters for the asset itself, for configuration of the asset, we definitely just need to press the save button. And with saving um, our configuration, we're moving back into the overview page. And you see that now we're having a motor asset configured. For showing the details and results, as uh, it is indicated by the assets uh, monitor itself, we can see the details by clicking onto the motor button and we see that the motor button or the motor uh, asset is shown green, so it is completely configured. We're seeing the measurement values and what you also see is a rotating blue bar or blue circle over here, which is doing the investigations, the calculations of the asset health right now, according to the signal that is driven into the asset monitors or the signals at the different channels. So we're seeing that we have our inboard and outboard horizontal vibration based on peak view and we have a temperature measurement, which is the live data directly transported into the screen from the charm level. So this is exactly what the charm is identifying and measuring at that very moment. And we are, if we're looking to the analytics, you see all the different rules with a bar graph display and it shows you the health indication for all the different rules at that very moment. So as you see, our motor is healthy right now, but for updating the analytics, we can easily press the circle over here and was playing some signals into the uh, asset monitor and pressing the circle, you will see that the health indication will be done by measurement. And if there is any fault or warning or critical situation detected, it will be shown on clear text as well on the upper part. So this is clear text information and where the asset might be unhealthy or critical or uh, just for information a warning state. And it uh, shows exactly the same thing at the lower part with the analytics with the bar graph display um, where we can see that for the air gap we have 78% which is shown from the bar graph as well as for the bearing we only have 79% which is shown in clear text here as well. And last but not least, on the lower part, uh, we're having a trend. So this trend can be shown with different scaling, but for reason that we have just configured our asset, it needs some time for being shown from here. So it, it needs a few uh, measurement points to be measured to see anything happening within the trend, finally. And last but not least, the information for the analytics. So those analytics are measured automatically from the asset monitor and get updated once per hour. But whenever you're doing commissioning and may have a need for updating it at that very moment right now, you can easily press the round circle and it starts rotating and the shaded blue from that very moment and it's updating the data according to that. So you see that my motor is now healthy again and um, the response is gone about the asset health indication. So that's quite everything that I wanted to show you real quick for um, how to set up an asset. And if we're moving into the asset section again, you see that the motor asset is here, but we may have multiple assets configured for one asset monitor box. So it could be um, two or three more to be configured in case it makes sense.